This is my top January favorite. I'm a consumer. At the end of the day, I'm a consumer, but I'm choosy and I like being on a budget. consumer though I also love talking about the things that I'm enjoying like I when I really like something I want to introduce it to other people I just get really excited about things so I always want to share what I'm listening to or what I'm reading all that to say welcome to January favorites I'm gonna start my January favorites with uh, the most priciest item and it's the Omnilux. This is red. Let me let me get it. This right. is a red light therapy device. I've been eyeing it for over two years, and it never goes on. I always I I always look at high price items to see when they go on sale to plan when I'm gonna buy them, and it only goes on sale around Black Friday. I think the discount was only like 15%. It's originally $3.95 US dollars. So it is on the pricier end, okay? I bought this for wrinkles, but um, in the last year I've been struggling with adult acne through my cheek for six months and I never really had acne when I was a teenager or in my 20s. Like I would get some, you know, periodically around my period or when I was highly stressed or eating certain things, but um, yeah, I've never struggled with it and it was really painful, uh, a little embarrassing. There was also like a little like, Kiki, I'm young too, Bowman, you know, like, I got acne too. Uh, but that went away real quick and I, it was so painful more than anything. I got this during Black Friday and it cleared up my acne. Like this was the one thing that I did differently and it's cleared out my acne. So I'm loving it. I don't have any reviews for it in terms of wrinkles because I haven't been using it long enough to to see if my fine lines are diminishing. Okay, this is called the Confessions Lipstick Red Zero by Hourglass. It's so cute. The packaging just gets me. I don't know if you can see there's like a little beetle. Ugh, whenever I put it on, I feel... Do you know when Ursula grabs a little beetle and puts on her lipstick? Just like killing it, okay? Like I am loving it. It feels soft on my lips. It's buildable. It plays well with others. I actually have it on right now with a little bit of eyeshadow. Uh, and it's refillable. So you keep the packaging and you can just refill the lipsticks. They also sell this color without this fancy packaging. And you get more bang for your buck quite literally, I think get more ounces of lipstick. I love that it was refillable. I'm really rough with my things. Uh, I've had this for over two months. Yeah, I've had this for over two months and I've dropped it and the only, I've dropped it a couple times and the only thing has like a small peel. But the cool thing about this hourglass lipstick is that it's like one of the first vegan patented uh, red lipsticks because usually red lipsticks I believe uses beetles to get the color so Hourglass has really tried to make a commitment to not use animal products I'm loving it I pulling this out of my purse is such a vibe okay like just applying it it I don't have to think too much about it because like I said it blends really nicely so it's not just a one-time use like for the winter or if you're a kind of girl who only wears like red during certain seasons. Hourglass is really that girly, okay? I've been using Hourglass lip glosses for over a year and a half. And I've bought Dior, I've bought Maybelline in between that Fenty, and they're just superior. I keep coming back to them. My sister gave me this for Christmas. Um, and they really hydrate your lips, I feel like, and it's so beautiful. During the summer, you can, it's buildable, and the packaging, come on, come on. You know, you know that pulling this out of your bag just creates a moment, okay? I got these paints probably around September of last year. I just wanted to improve my simple watercolor game, and I bought this, and... It's just so nice to have something so compact. It comes 
with a paintbrush. It's nice to have something compact just to bust out. It doesn't require a lot of space. I'm loving it. I'm having a really great time using it. The first one I want to mention is Jason Momoa's On the Roam. He has created this show about his really niche passions and the friends that he has met through those niche passions. And he's highlighting these artisans and craftsmen. And it's really raw and I'm completely touched by it. If, if I had a ton of money, then I probably would be doing something similar. Uh, some storytelling form combining my passions and it's really cool honestly to see somebody doing it my partner and i currently are loving the show traders it's on peacock you know i like a little tea and i like a little ethics like i like I like shows that sometimes make me think. Um, I think that's why reality TV shows are so fun sometimes. Like these are people that are making money, but they're making decisions over their lives and their ethics. Do they function differently? I don't know, that's me getting into the weeds of it. Uh, but it's really, really interesting watching this trader shows and seeing how much people can handle lying to another person. Uh, there's like new episodes every Thursday and I, I know that, so I'm enjoying it. So I thought I'd mention the traders on Peacock. Uh, Talking about beef, I am living for what's going on with Miss Onika and Megan. I love a little rap beef, okay? When everything was popping off, my sister's text was popping off, then a friend started talking to me, then my partner started talking to me about the beef. It's just like, you know, and I, rap beef, I truly believe you gotta play dirty, okay? Like, I grew up listening to 80s and 90s rap, and they drag everyone, your diseases even, into the mix. I'm not a stand for any of them. Like, I just, I appreciate both music pretty equally. Uh, but Miss Megan the Stallion with that Megan slaw, ooh, that, that was so good. It took me a minute to register and be like, that's done. That's done. There's no other way around it. I was absolutely gagged earlier this month with the Brienne of Tarth porcelain moment and Hakator coming back. When I saw the clips of her walking down with the makeup like a porcelain doll, and then I knew it had to be Pat McGrath, right? Like Brienne of Tarth's name is Gwendolyn Christie. Uh, and she is a very big woman like she has stature she has power Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones she was like a fighter like a knight um they dressed her like a porcelain doll I wonder if I can show images I'm gonna try to put some images up because verbally I will not be able to explain it it just really made me excited for makeup I feel like we are really strictly following fashion trends um and I, I just miss people expressing themselves. You know, I love seeing people who do the makeup when I'm in a city. That's why I love city living. City living is just, people are their own fashion trends. People invest the time to get to know what they like, what they don't like, what they feel comfortable, what they feel sexy in, what they feel hot in, what they feel powerful in. And then they just do it, you know? And they sometimes tie it in with the trends, but they're mostly doing them. I digress. Okay, I'm on TikTok just like everybody else, and uh, I heard the Edge of the Earth by the Beaches playing in some videos that were trending, and I was like, "What? What is this? Like, it did it did something to me." And so, the Beaches are a Canadian girl band, and I've been listening to the radio for the past couple weeks. And I've been painting to it. I actually have, I'll link a video that I, I created um, where I actually have the playlist for them so you can listen along as I'm painting. Anyways, they, I feel like I'm a teenager again. There is something really raw and honest about specifically female punk groups. So I am just living for the moment, listening to the beaches, I heard this song called Money by Lola Young and I favorited it. I went to Lola Young's page on Spotify and I started playing the CD. The album's called My Mind Wanders and Sometimes Leaves Completely. 
when I tell you I'm obsessed I was outside listening to the album on loop and you know when you're like listening to an album on loop uh, you just kind of let go of time so I started just painting and it's not done I'm not done listening to her album either like now I want to go to her shows like she's just Lola Young Lola Young she she's everything right now to me because I have not listened to an album on loop like that in years um so I'm gonna get, continue listening to her and painting outside and see what comes out. This is what I have. It's like on a scratch piece of paper. It's not done. I don't know when it's done, but it's called the backstab. The Kindle and Libby combo, superior. Okay. I just read Britney Spears autobiography. Uh, the title is The Woman in Me. This woman has gone through so much and it's so sad seeing how like a woman that so many people wanted to be a woman with like all the resources seemingly just gets exploited uh constantly over and over and over again i really enjoyed the read I think part of the reason why it was so intriguing for me is that it's this woman who I know so much about because she was growing up in the spotlight and I grew up around the same era where she was becoming extremely popular. That's who, you, like, that's who people wanted to be. That's who boys wanted to be with. So I knew so much about her life. Um, but I had not heard it from her. And to hear it from her, to hear all those moments where, yeah, so many things were being said about her and to see what she was actually going through from her mouth. Um, I just have a lot of empathy for her. And some people were kind of taking digs at the book, saying that it doesn't have, I don't know, the deep, reflection um that some autobiographies by like i don't know some presidents have and i think uh boo and i also agree that the that britney's autobiography reads more like a journal um of someone trying to process a lot of things and it may seem uh a little bit younger like but also, like, this woman has had no liberties for all of her 30s. She had no choices. Uh, I can't imagine not being able to make the choices and the mistakes to develop through your late 20s and your 30s. Anyways, go read it if you want to know about Britney or if you know. I think if you grew up around it, you're going to find it fascinating like me just because this is her first time kind of telling her story. The following favorite has a trigger warning. I won't get into details about it, but if you go and read it, just know um, that it contains some really sensitive stuff. It's in the Rolling Stone magazine. It's an article by Alex Morris called After Two Decades Undercover, She's Ready to Tell the Real Story of Human Trafficking. Uh... This is about a woman who joined the FBI and started pursuing human trafficking and, dis and discusses how it's like a homegrown problem that we think that it's something that's occurring in different countries, uh, but it's actually rampant here. And the way it's rampant is not the way we think about it. It's often through children. And it is such a good read. Uh, I don't know very much about Alex Morris, the author, but every they're the kind of writer where every sentence says something, so you have to read it carefully, you have to digest it, and it's a long enough article, but it just, it's so well written, number one, and number two, the subject is fascinating, uh, and they're talking about two decades, so it's so informative. Even though it's long, every sentence counts. So I highly, highly recommend that article. Just know that there is some really, really sensitive content. So you've been warned.
we're thinking about getting a nice couch and we don't know if we should fully invest in it or if we should if you have any comments or recommendations let me know but i really care about material in terms of fabric and how things are going to hold up if i'm going to be investing so i saw that six penny had these fabric swatches that you can order for free and i don't know if you can see but they have like fabric care and leather care cards it just feels so intentional that even from their fabric swatches they're convincing me as a customer and i don't know what that says about me um but beautiful look at this washed cotton linen wouldn't this be gorgeous on like a like a slip couch those slip couches that you continue washing I mean, come on, come on, it's gorgeous. Uh, I got this at Costco over the weekend and I got the ones that hadn't been blooming that just had like a little bit of pink kind of that look like that and it's sitting in my living room and i absolutely love it oh i didn't even know they smelled good yes this this was under 20 dollars, and i love having fresh flowers in my home i always buy them girly pop this is the one this is the one to get this these are fake but this is what i have in my room and now I have this in my living room. I think I need to get a second one for our bedroom. This is such a win. This is such a win. If you don't have a lot to spend but love fresh flowers for under 20 bucks, get your friend. Call your friend with a Costco card. Call them up. Well, thank you for joining me on my first monthly favorites. I... I'm trying to consume less this year. I'm still a work in progress in that department. Uh, but I wanted to just share some of my favorites that are not just purchases, but things that have really improved my life, you know? Like, well, like,